Ornica Tania Maraj Petty, known professionally as Nicki Minaj, is a Trinidadian-born rapper, singer, and songwriter. She is known for her versatility as an artist, her animated flow and lyricism in her rapping, and her usage of alter egos and accents. Minaj first gained recognition after releasing three mixtapes between 2007 and 2009. She rose to fame with her debut album, Pink Friday, which topped the US Billboard 200. The fifth single, Super Bass, reached number three on the US Billboard Hot 100 and became the highest charting solo song by a female rapper since 2002. It also became the second song by a solo female rapper to become Diamond certified in the US. The follow-up album, Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded, saw Minaj exploring a dance pop sound, and reached number one in several countries worldwide. Her third and fourth studio albums, The Pink Print and Queen, explored more personal topics and marked a return to her hip-hop roots. The former's US top two-second single, Anaconda, became the first solo female rap video to reach 1 billion views on YouTube. Her collaboration with Carol G. Tusa, became the longest-running number one single in Argentina. In 2020, Minaj spawned her first and second US number one singles with Say So Remix with Doja Cat and Trolls with 669 in. With Trolls, she became the first female rapper in two decades to debut at number one on the chart. She became the first female artist to hold 100 Billboard Hot 100 entries. She has 20 US top 10 singles, the most for any female rapper, and is one of seven female artists to reach it. She re-released her mixtape Beam Me Up Scotty in 2021, becoming the highest debut for a female rap mixtape, debuting at number two in the US often cited as the queen of rap and the queen of hip-hop, by several media outlets. Minaj is one of the best-selling artists of all time, with 100 million records sold worldwide. Additionally, she was named one of the most influential hip-hop artists of all time by Evening Standard. Her accolades include eight American Music Awards, five MTV Video Music Awards, six MTV Europe Music Awards, 12 BT Awards, four Billboard Music Awards, a Brit Award, and three Guinness World Records. Billboard ranked her as the best-selling female rapper of the 2010s, and seventh among the top female artists. In 2016, Time included her on their annual list of the 100 most influential people in the world. Outside of music, her film career has included voice roles in the animated films Ice Age, Continental Drift and The Angry Birds Movie 2 as well as supporting roles in the comedy films The Other Woman and Barbershop the next cut. She is currently the most followed rapper on Instagram with over 175 million followers. Chapter 1, Early Life Ornica Tania Maraj was born in the St. James district of Port of Spain, Trinidad, and Tobago, on December 8, 1982. Her father was Robert Maraj, a financial executive and part-time gospel singer of Dudler descent. Her mother, Carol Maraj, is also a gospel singer with Afro-Trinidadian ancestry. Carol worked in payroll and accounting departments during Minaj's youth. Minaj's father was addicted to alcohol and crack cocaine and had a violent temper, burning down their house in December 1987. She has an older brother named Jelani, a younger brother named Makaya, and a younger sister named Ming. As a child, Minaj and her older brother, Jelani, grew up with her grandmother in St. James in a household with eleven cousins. Minaj's mother, Carol Maraj, was working numerous jobs in St. James before getting her green card at the age of 24. She then moved to the Bronx in New York City to attend Monroe College leaving both Minaj and Jelani in Trinidad with their grandmother. Eventually, when Minaj was five, Carol got her first house on 147th Street in South Jamaica, Queens and migrated both Minaj and Jelani to live with her and their father. Minaj recalled, I don't think I had a lot of discipline in my household. My mom motivated me, but it wasn't a strict household. I kind of wanted a strict household. 
Minaj successfully auditioned for admission to Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts, which focuses on visual and performing arts. After graduation, Minaj wanted to become an actress, and she was cast in the off-Broadway play In Case You Forget in 2001. At the age of 19, as she struggled with her acting career, she worked as a waitress at a Red Lobster in the Bronx, but was fired for discourtesy to customers. She said she was fired from at least 15 jobs for similar reasons. Other jobs included customer service representative and office management on Wall Street. Minaj recalls buying a BMW as a 19-year-old with the money from waitressing. Chapter 2 – Career Chapter 2 – Section 1 – 2004-2009 – Career Beginnings Minaj briefly signed with Brooklyn Group Full Force, in which she rapped in a quartet called The Hood Stars composed of Lou Star, Safari Samuels and Seven Up. In 2004, the group recorded the entrance song for WWE Diva Victoria, Don't Mess With, which was featured on the compilation album Theme Addict, WWE The Music, Volume 6. Minaj later left Full Force and uploaded songs on her MySpace profile, sending several of her songs to people in the music industry. Later, Fendi, CEO of Brooklyn label Dirty Money Entertainment, signed Minaj to his label in 2007 under a 180-day contract. Originally adopting the stage name Nicki Mirage, she eventually changed it to Nicki Minaj stating that my real name is Mirage. Fendi flipped it when he met me because I had such a nasty flow. Minaj released her first mixtape, Playtime Is Over, on July 5, 2007, and her second, Sucker Free, on April 12, 2008. She released her third mixtape, Beam Me Up Scotty, on April 18, 2009, it received favorable coverage on BT and MTV. At the time, she was managed by Deborah Anthony. One of its tracks, I Get Crazy, reached number 20 on the US Billboard Hot Rap Songs chart and number 37 on the Hot R and B Slash Hip Hop Songs chart. After Minaj was discovered by fellow rapper Lil Wayne, she signed a recording contract with his Young Money Entertainment. That November, she appeared with Gucci Mane and Trina on the remix of Five Star Bitch by Yo Gotti Dot in early February 2010. Minaj made her first two appearances on the Billboard Hot 100 chart with her features on Knockout and Up Out My Face by Lil Wayne, and Mariah Carey respectively. Minaj also appeared on Bedrock and Roger That on the compilation album, We Are Young Money. The singles peaked at numbers 2 and 56, respectively, on the US Billboard Hot 100, their parent album reached number 9 on the US Billboard 200, and was certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America. At Jay-Z's suggestion, Robin Thicke featured Minaj on his single Shaking It For Daddy. Alison Stewart of the Washington Post stated that, during that time, she became the go-to girl for artists who wanted to add some skank to their tracks without sullying themselves in the process. Minaj became the first female solo artist, to have seven singles, simultaneously charting on the Billboard Hot 100. Chapter 2 Section 2, 2010-2011, Breakthrough with Pink Friday On March 29, 2010, Minaj released Massive Attack. Intended as the lead single from her forthcoming debut album, Pink Friday, the song was dropped from the album due to poor commercial performance and the next single, Your Love, released on June 1st, became the album's lead single, peaking at number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 1 on the Billboard Rap Songs chart. In September, Minaj released Check It Out and Write Through Me as follow-up singles. She also became the first female rap artist to ever perform at Yankee Stadium in 2010. In October, Minaj was featured on Kanye West's Monster, with her verse receiving acclaim and many critics regarding it as the best verse on that song, The Village Voice's Sean Fennessy stated that Monster was the track that announced Minaj's brilliance to most people. Complex rated Minaj's Monster verse as the number one best rap verse in the past five years. Lauren Nostro of Complex wrote, Once the beat drops, we meet the many faces of Nicki Minaj. 
her performance has the power, years after its release, makes you stop dead in your tracks. Altering her vocal style on every line, she bounces her wordplay from Giuseppe Zanotti's shoes to Tony Matterhorn's dutty wine to suggesting a menage a trois with Kanye and his then-girlfriend Amber Rose. It was clear, she did her thing alongside the best in the game, she stole the show, in fact, outshined them all. In November 2010, Minaj received her first Grammy Award nomination for her guest verse on Ludacris song My Chick Bad. Pink Friday was released on November 19, 2010, debuting at number 2 and reaching number 1 on the Billboard 200, with first week sales of 375,000 copies. It had the highest sales week for a female rap album this century and second highest sales week overall after Lauryn Hill's The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. Upon release, the album received generally positive reviews from critics. The album was certified platinum in December, and eventually reached number one in the United States in February 2011. Pink Friday became the first solo album by a female rapper to go platinum in seven years. Moment for Life was released as the fourth single from Pink Friday shortly after the album's release. The song serves as the third single off the album, released as a single on December 7, 2010. Minaj performed Right Through Me and Moment for Life as the musical guest on the January 29, 2011 episode of Saturday Night Live. Super Bass, the album's fifth single, was released in April 2011, and became a sleeper hit and commercial success, it ultimately peaked at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100 and was eventually certified octuple platinum, in the US at the time, Super Bass was the highest charting solo single by a female rapper since Missy Elliott's Work It. The music video has 900 million views on YouTube, as of August 2021. Minaj was one of the opening acts on Britney Spears' 2011 Femme Fatale tour. She and Kesha appeared on the remix of Spears Till the World Ends, which peaked at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100. On August 7, 2011, Nikki experienced a nip slip during a live performance on Good Morning America. Minaj was criticized for wearing the low-cut shirt during her performance which led to the brief exposure of her breast on a live telecast. ABC apologized for incident. Minaj, while interviewed on ABC's Nightline show, apologized for the incident and denied that she intentionally sought to expose herself on live television as a publicity stunt. The incident attracted protest from the Parents' Television Council. Despite this, Minaj continued to perform at high-profile events throughout 2011, Donatella Versace invited her to perform with Prince for the introduction of a Versace collection for H&M, and she performed Super Bass at the 2011 Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. In December 2011, Minaj was nominated for three Grammy Awards, including Best New Artist and Best Rap Album for Pink Friday. Also that year, she won the MTV Video Music Award for Best Hip Hop Video for Super Bass, marking her first VMA win. Chapter 2 Section 3, 2012-2013, Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded and The Ray Up. Starships was released in February 2012 as the lead single from Minaj's forthcoming second album Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded. The song reached number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100, and went on to become the fifth best-selling single of 2012 and one of the best-selling digital singles of all time. Minaj's crossover into pop music was criticized by some, despite her commercial success. Follow-up singles Bees in the Trap and Right by My Side were released shortly after. Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded was eventually released on April 2, 2012, two months later than planned. The album was preceded by the promotional singles Roman in Moscow and Stupid Ho. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, with first week sales of 253,000 copies, and was certified platinum by the RIA in June 2012. However, its mix of hip-hop songs and mainstream pop material received mixed reviews from music critics. Pound the Alarm and Va Va Voom were later released as the final singles from the album. 
Minaj and rapper M.I.A. joined Madonna to perform the single, Give Me All Your Lovin', during the Super Bowl 46 halftime show on February 6, 2012. Minaj was the first solo female rapper to perform at the Grammy Awards, premiering Roman Holiday during the 2012 ceremony on February 12. Her exorcism-themed performance was controversial, with the American Catholic League criticizing Minaj for bringing a fake pope to escort her on the red carpet. The exorcism scene that was performed during her appearance was criticized as well. Catholic League President Bill Donahue called Minaj's performance vulgar. Minaj began her headlining Pink Friday tour on May 16, 2012, which was followed by the Pink Friday Reloaded tour beginning October 14, 2012. Although she was scheduled to headline the June 3 Hot 97 Summer Jam at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, at the request of Lil Wayne she cancelled her appearance the day of the show after Peter Rosenberg of the station dismissed her single Starships as not real hip-hop. The following month, Minaj voiced Steffi in the animated film Ice Age, Continental Drift. She won awards for Best Female Video at the 2012 MTV Video Music Awards and Best Hip Hop at the 2012 MTV Europe Music Awards. An expanded version of Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded, subtitled The Ray Up, was released on November 19, 2012. That month, Minaj was the subject of a three-part e-documentary titled Nicki Minaj, My Truth. She announced plans for her own record label after signing Parker Isle, Brinks, Keisha, and Blackout Movement. In September, Minaj joined the judges' panel for the 12th season of American Idol with Mariah Carey, Keith Urban, and Randy Jackson. Throughout the show there were disagreements between Carey and Minaj. Minaj left the series at the end of the season. Chapter 2 Section 4 2014 to 2017, The Pink Print, and Other Ventures. Minaj's first live action theatrical film, The Other Woman, was filmed in spring 2013 and premiered on April 25, 2014. She played Lydia, assistant to Carly. In 2013, Minaj described her then forthcoming third album, The Pink Print, as a continuation of the Ray Up with a lot more and said it would focus on her hip hop roots. During an MTV interview, she said that her third album, would be next level and that she has much to talk about. Pills and Potions was released as the lead single from the Pink Print in May 2014. Anaconda was released in August as the second single, peaking at number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming her highest charting single in the US to date. The music video for Anaconda attracted significant controversy from conservative media and went viral upon release online, it set a 24-hour Vivo record, accumulating 19.6 million views on its first day of release, breaking the record previously held by Miley Cyrus for Wrecking Ball. In December of that year, Minaj received two Grammy Award nominations, for Best Rap Song and Best Pop Duo Slash Group Performance. The Pink Print was officially released on December 15, 2014, and debuted at number 2 on the US Billboard 200, with first week sales of 244,000 equivalent units. Upon release, the album received generally favorable reviews from critics who praised the production and personal lyrics. At the 58th Grammy Awards, Minaj received three more Grammy Award nominations, including a second Best Rap Album nomination for The Pink Print. On November 9, 2014, Minaj hosted the 2014 MTV Europe Music Awards at the SSE Hydro, Glasgow, Scotland. She also won the Best Hip Hop Award for a second time. In March 2015, Minaj embarked on her third world tour entitled The Pink Print Tour and also became the first female artist to chart four songs simultaneously in the top ten of Billboard's mainstream R&B slash hip-hop airplay chart. At the 2015 BT Awards, Minaj won her sixth consecutive award for Best Female Hip-Hop Artist, becoming the female rapper with most wins in that category. In August 2015, Madame Two Swords unveiled a wax figure of Minaj, which depicted her bent down on her hands and knees, the pose from the Anaconda music video. The attraction received criticism from some, 
including rapper Azealia Banks and The Independent, who called it sexist and racist. Despite this, Minaj voiced her approval of the wax figure on social media. After numerous visitors began taking sexually suggestive photos with Minaj's statue, the museum instituted extra security. In September 2015, it was announced that Minaj would executive produce and appear in a scripted single-camera comedy series for ABC Family based on her life growing up in Queens, New York City. The show was titled Nikki and the pilot episode was filmed in Minaj's hometown in January 2016. In October 2016, Minaj stated the filming was postponed for undisclosed reasons. In May 2015, it was announced that Minaj would feature in the third installment of the Barbershop film series, alongside Ice Cube, Cedric the Entertainer, Eve, and other original cast members. Titled Barbershop, The Next Cut, the film was released on April 15, 2016, and received critical acclaim, earning an average score of 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. Minaj's character in the film is a sassy hairdresser named Dreyer. For her performance, she was nominated for a Teen Choice Award for Choice Movie Actress, Comedy. In February 2017, Minaj was featured on Jason Derulo's single Swallow, which reached the top 10 in several countries, including a peak of number 6 in the UK singles chart. The following month, Minaj signed with the major modeling agency, Wilhelmina Models. On March 20, 2017, when her singles No Frauds, Changed It, and Regret in Your Tears were released simultaneously, Minaj broke the record for the most Billboard Hot 100 entries for a female artist, which was previously held by Aretha Franklin. The record was later surpassed by Taylor Swift in December 2020. In May, Minaj opened the 2017 Billboard Music Awards with a medley performance that was described by Elias Light of Rolling Stone as flamboyantly produced and dexterous. Throughout the remainder of 2017, Minaj performed guest verses on several singles, including Migos Motorsport and Your Gotti's Rake It Up, both of which peaked inside the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 chart, at numbers 6 and 8, respectively. She also featured on Katy Perry's Swish Swish, which peaked at 46 on the chart and was certified platinum in the US and Canada. Chapter 2 Section 5, 2018-2019, Queen Minaj announced her fourth album, Queen, on the red carpet at the 2018 Met Gala, the album was scheduled to be released on June 15, 2018, but was delayed multiple times before being released on August 10, 2018. Its lead single, Chun-Li, was released on April 12, 2018, and peaked at number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. She performed the song on Saturday Night Live and the 2018 BT Awards. Another single, Barbie Tings, was released alongside Chun-Li, but did not make the final album cut. It is, however, included on the target version of the album. Queen's second single, Bed, featuring Ariana Grande, was released on June 14, 2018, alongside the album Pre-Order, and peaked at number 42 on the Hot 100. On July 22, 2018, Takashi 669-in single Fefe, which featured Minaj, was released and debuted at number 4 on the Billboard Hot 100. Fefe marked Minaj's highest bow on the chart as a featured artist at the time, besting the sixth place start of Bang Bang in 2014. It later peaked at number 3 on the Hot 100, and was added to Queen in the middle of its first tracking week. The day before the album's release, Minaj launched her own Beats 1 radio show, Queen Radio. Queen debuted at number 2 on the US Billboard 200 with 185,000 album equivalent units, of which 78,000 came from pure album sales. It also debuted at number 5 in the UK and at number 4 in Australia, marking the highest debut of Minaj's career in the latter country. Upon debuting second on the Billboard 200, Minaj expressed frustration and criticized several people in a series of tweets, including Travis Scott, whose album Astro World claimed the top spot for a second week in a row, blocking Queen from the top spot. Minaj claimed that Travis Scott sold shirts, merchandise, 
and ticket passes for an unannounced tour to boost his album sales. Queen's rollout and the ensuing controversy was documented by several news outlets and commentators. Queen received generally positive reviews, with some critics taking issue with the album's length and consistency. The album was certified platinum by the RIA in January 2019, for moving over 1 million equivalent units. On August 20, Minaj won her fourth MTV Video Music Award for the Chun-Li Music Video at the 35th Annual Ceremony. Later that month, BTS single, Idol, featuring Minaj, was released, it debuted and peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100, making it the group's second-highest charting song. On October 12, 2018, British girl group Little Mix released their single featuring Minaj, Woman Like Me. A music video, which features Minaj wearing Elizabethan ruff and not much else, was released the same month. A BBC writer opined that the video tackled gender stereotypes. Minaj was featured on Tiger's song Dip, which reached number 63 on the Hot 100, making her the first female artist to have 100 entries on the chart. She later attended the year-end Billboard Women in Music event, receiving the Game Changer Award for the accomplishment. Minaj also participated in a series of music festivals. On September 2, 2018, Minaj co-headlined the annual Made in America festival and suffered a wardrobe malfunction. In November 2018, Minaj was invited to the DWP Music Festival in China but did not perform due to problems with the company hosting the event. In April 2019, Minaj made a guest appearance at the 2019 Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival during Ariana Grande's and performed alongside her to their collaborations Side to Side and Bang Bang. However, she experienced technical difficulties with her earpiece. Later that month, Minaj parted ways with her longtime management team after a mutual agreement. In June 2019, Minaj released her first solo song of 2019, titled Megatron. In July, she provided information on her forthcoming fifth studio album, appearing on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon stating you're the first to find out, of course there's a new album. She appeared on the song Hot Girl Summer alongside Megan The Stallion in August 2019, which debuted and peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. Minaj had a voice role in the Angry Birds movie too, released in the same month. On November 1, 2019, Minaj appeared on the Charlie's Angels, original motion picture soundtrack on the song Bad To You, along with Ariana Grande and Normani. The following week, Tusa, Minaj's collaboration with Colombian singer Carl G, was released to streaming platforms. The track peaked at number 42 on the Billboard Hot 100 and reached the top of many other charts, including the Hot Latin Songs chart which made it the first song with two lead female artists to debut in such position. Chapter 2 Section 6, 2020-2021, Collaborations and Beam Me Up Scotty Re-Release After a social media hiatus, she returned to both Twitter and Instagram on January 30, 2020, to announce her appearance as a guest judge on the premiere episode of the 12th season on the American reality competition series RuPaul's Drag Race. The next day, her collaboration with American singer Megan Trainer entitled Nice to Meet You was released accompanied by a music video. Soon after posting a snippet of a new, untitled track, Minaj announced that she would be returning to music with her first solo song of 2020, titled Yikes which was released on February 7, 2020. On May 1, 2020, American rapper Doja Cat featured Minaj on two remixes of her song Say So. That week, the remix topped the Billboard Hot 100, becoming Minaj's first single to reach number one on the chart. It was the first female collaboration in six years, since Fancy by Iggy Azalea featuring Charlie XCX to peak atop the chart, and marked the first time that a song by two female rappers reached the top, with Megan Garvey of Billboard remarking that it paved the way for Cardi B and Megan The Stallion WAP a few months after. On June 12, 2020, 669 In and Minaj released Trolls, which became their third collaboration. 
It debuted atop the Hot 100, becoming Minaj's second number one single. This made Minaj the second female rapper to debut atop the Hot 100 chart since Lauryn Hill did so in 1998 with Doo Wop. As it dropped to 34, Trolls became the first single to fall over 30 positions in its second week after debuting at number one, breaking the record for largest fall from number one in the country at the time. The record was later broken by Taylor Swift's Willow, which dropped to 38 after debuting atop of the chart. Tot on July 30, 2020, Minaj collaborated with ASAP Ferg and made in Tokyo for the track Move Your Hips. Almost a month later, Minaj featured on Ty Dollar Sign's track, Expensive and featured in the video for it. She continued to appear as a featured artist on several songs into late 2020, and released What That Speed Bout. With Mike Will Made It and Young Boy Never Broke Again on November 6. Later that month, Minaj announced a six-part docuseries cataloging her life set to premiere in 2021 on HBO Max. On May 14, 2021, Minaj released a reissue of her 2000 and nine mixtape Beam Me Up Scotty. It debuted at number two on the Billboard 200, becoming the highest debut for a female rap mixtape on the chart. A song from the reissue, titled Seeing Green featuring fellow rappers Drake and Lil Wayne reached number 12 on the Billboard Off 100 and appear on the mid-year best hip-hop songs of 2021 critics list by Hip Hopped. Minaj's verse on Fractions from Beam Me Up Scotty appeared on the mid-year best rap verses of 2021 so far critics list from Complex. On July 9, 2021, Minaj revealed herself as a feature on the remix of Whole Lot of Money with American rapper Beer. The remix appeared on several best songs of the year critics lists from publications such as Rolling Stone and NPR. In September 2021, Minaj was revealed as a feature on English singer songwriter Elton John's upcoming studio album, The Lockdown Sessions. She appeared on the track Always Love You with John and Young Thug. On September 14, 2021, Minaj split with her previous manager Irving Azoff and is now being managed by Saxco, best known for managing The Weeknd and Doja Cat. On September 28, 2021, Jesse Nelson released a collaboration with Minaj as her solo debut called Boys. It debuted at number 4 in the UK and number 16 in Ireland. In October 2021, Minaj was revealed to cameo as a host in the season 6 reunion of The Real Housewives of Potomac. In November 2021, her 2011 Pink Friday single Super Bass was certified diamond by RIA making her the second female rapper to receive a diamond certification for a song. Minaj won the Best Hip Hop Award in the MTV Europe Music Awards 2021, becoming the sixth time she has won this award. Minaj also won the People's Champ Award from the hip hop magazine Double XL's Yearly Awards. It was the only award that was fan voted according to Double XL. Chapter 2 Section 7 2022 present, upcoming fifth studio album. On January 27, 2022, Minaj announced a new song called, Do We Have a Problem? Featuring American rapper Lil Baby. It was released on February 4, along with a music video that was directed by Benny Boom and featured guest appearances from actors Joseph Sikora and Corey Hardrack. Minaj's role in the video was inspired by Angelina Jolie's performance in the 2010 film Salt. The video also teased another track titled Bussin. The track, also a collaboration with Lil Baby, was officially released a week later, on February 11th. In a promotional Apple Music interview with Zane Lowe, Minaj said her fifth studio album is coming very soon. She also made an appearance on The Late Late Show with James Corden where she revealed her plans to release the album before the summer of 2022. Chapter 3, Artistry Chapter 3 Section 1, Musical Style Minaj is known for her animated rapping style and unique flow. Her rapping is distinctive for its speed and the use of alter egos and accents, primarily British Cockney. She often both sings and raps in her songs, and has made use of metaphors, punchlines, and wordplay. 
The alter egos are incorporated with her lyrics in British accents or soft, spokenness. Ice-T said about Minaj's rapping style, does her thing. She has her own way of doing it. She has an ill vocal delivery. She kind of reminds me of a female Buster Rhymes, like how she throws her voice in different directions. John Caramonica of the New York Times called Minaj a sparkling rapper with a gift for comic accents and unexpected turns of phrase. She's a walking exaggeration, outsize in sound, personality and look. And she's a rapid evolver, discarding old modes as easily as adopting new ones. Although many critics describe her technique as bubblegum rap, Minaj said, what people don't know is that before I was doing that craziness I was doing me, I was just doing regular sounding rap that anyone could hear and identify with. But once I started doing all that weird shit, I'm not mad at it because it got everyone's attention. Robbie Seabrook 3 of XXL included Minaj in list of most unique flows from rappers over the last five years, saying that she has solidified her spot as a leader of the pack for her animated flows, inspiring many other women in hip-hop to play with their vocals. She goes from campy to bellicose, excited to eccentric, oftentimes all on one song. Noted as a rap artist, she also occasionally lends herself to electronic music genres. Pink Friday marked her exploration of the genres, spawning electro songs including the pop-laden super bass. Also combining rap with synthesizer music, Minaj's second album, Pink Friday Roman Reloaded, had a number of electro-hop and electro-pop songs, HOV Lane, Whip It, Automatic, Come on a Cone, Young Forever, Fire Burns, Roman Holiday, The Boys and Bees in the Trap, while Starships is a Eurodance song. Her verse on Kanye West Monster was critically acclaimed and contributed greatly to her popularity, many critics said she had the best verse in the song. West claimed at one point he considered deleting her verse from the track, because he was worried it would outshine his own work. It was like that moment when I thought about taking Nicky's verse off of Monster because I knew people would say that was the best verse on the best hip-hop album of all time or arguably top 10 albums of all time. And I would do all that work, 8 months of work on Dark Fantasy and people to this day would say to me my favorite thing was Nicki Minaj's verse. So if I let my ego get the best of me instead of letting that girl get the shot to get that platform to be all she could be. I would take it off or marginalize her, try to stop her from having that shining moment. Tara Colley of The Conversation described Minaj as a preeminent female rapper and that she has consistently straddled the distinct personas of gangster boss and sexy pop siren without truly committing to either and that her chameleonic ability matches some of rap's most verbose, witty, filthy and pop-friendly stars, such as Eminem and Lil Wayne. Zoe Johnson of Double XL stated that in recent years Minaj's beat selection has moved to refined production full of grit and hip-hop flair in recent years. Chapter 3 Section 2, Alter Egos With her parents frequently fighting during her childhood, Minaj lived through characters she created as a means of escape. She recalled that fantasy was my reality and her first identity was Cookie, who became Harajuku Barbie and Nicki Minaj. In November 2010, Minaj assumed the alter ego Nikki Teresa, wearing a colorful headdress and calling herself healer to her fans during a visit to the Garden of Dreams Foundation at Fuse Studios in New York. She introduced another alter ego, Rosa, to commemorate her December 2010 appearance on Lopez Tonight. One of Minaj's most well known alter egos is a demon inside her named Roman Zelansky, Minaj's twin brother, whose character she assumes when she is angry. Roman has been compared to Eminem's alter ego Slim Shady, and on Roman's Revenge Minaj and Eminem collaborate as their alter egos. On her next album, she said that there would be a lot of Roman, and if you're not familiar with Roman, then you will be familiar with him very soon. He's the boy that lives inside of me. He's a lunatic and he's gay and he'll be on there a lot. Roman has a mother, Martha Zelansky, who appeared on Roman's Revenge with a British accent and singing on Roman Holiday for the first time. Martha appeared in the Moment 4 Life video as Minaj's apparent fairy godmother. Chapter 3 Section 3, Influences 
Minaj cites Lil Wayne, Foxy Brown, and Jay-Z as major influences, I can't even imagine my career, um, my creative spirit without Wayne. I feel like I'm still intertwined with him creatively. Minaj has called Lil Wayne her mentor and credited him with discovering her. On Foxy Brown and Jay-Z, Minaj said, I really loved as a female rapper. I was really interested in her mind and her aura I was really, really into Jay-Z. Me and my friends in high school, we were reciting all of the Jay lyrics. His words were our words in our conversations all the time, she said, further, I never really told Foxy how much she has influenced me and how much she changed my life adding that Foxy Brown was the most influential female rapper for her. Minaj said in a T Magazine interview in 2017, Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, Foxy Brown. Those are the three I keep in my head when I'm writing because they've influenced me so much, I feel like I'm a part of all of them. Jada Pinkett Smith is one of Minaj's role models in her acting career. Minaj was inspired by R&B singer Monica, singing Why I Love You So Much at every talent show she entered. While performing in Atlanta as part of her Pink Friday tour, she called Monica one of her all-time greatest musical influences. Lauren Hill is also one of Minaj's major influences, with Minaj quoting her lyrics in a high school yearbook. Minaj has also cited Madonna, Enya, Eminem, Beyoncé, Kanye West, Trina, Drake, Remy Ma, and Lil Kim as influences. She called Betsy Johnson a fashion inspiration, is a free spirit. When I met her the other day, I felt like I knew her for my whole life. She's so warm and considerate and caring. She's amazingly talented and I've been wearing her clothes forever, so to meet her was like, yay. Bowing down to her, she's dope. Minaj has also expressed appreciation for Cindy Lauper's style and how her videos inspired her as a teenager, when I first went to get my hair colored, I was about 14 and I wanted blonde highlights. The beautician said, no, you have to get your mother on the phone, and I was just crying and begging. I've always been experimenting. Cindy Lauper's videos, that's what intrigued me. Chapter 4, Public Image Billboard listed Minaj the fourth most active musician on social media on its March 2011 Social 50 chart. Minaj is also the most followed rapper on Instagram with 155 million followers. On Twitter, she is one of the most followed rappers, with 22 million followers on the app, as of 2021. She joined American Idol as a judge in 2013. BT has named Minaj as a gay icon. Minaj was a vocal proponent of streams counting towards an artist's RIA certifications. The organization later announced in 2016 that it would be modernizing the certification process for albums, including on-demand audio and video streams, as reported by Yahoo. News. Minaj has been called as a fashion icon by Allure, Time, XXL and has been called a camp-style icon by Refinery29. She has cited Alexander McQueen, Gianni Versace, and Christian Louboutin as her favorite designers. The Huffington Post described her style as risk-taking and far out, with bold sartorial choices, Minaj has been included on the annual Maxim Hot 100 list several times. In 2014, Minaj underwent a reinvention in her image sporting a natural and softer look, wearing fewer wigs and less colorful costumes. She stated that she went so far to the other side that there's only one place to go from there. You can either continue doing costumes or you can just say, hey guess what? This will shock them even more. Doing nothing will shock them even more. Her physique, notably her buttocks, has attracted significant attention from the media. Early in her career, she made autographing breasts part of her movement to empower women. In 2010, she said that although she originally felt obligated to mimic the provocative behavior of the female rappers of day, she intended to subdue her sexuality because she people, especially young girls, to know that in life, nothing is going to be based on sex appeal. You've got to have something else to go with that. 
Minaj talked about feminism in an interview with Vogue in 2015, saying there are things that I do that feminists don't like, and there are things that I do that they do like. I don't label myself. I just say the truth about what I feel. I feel like women can do anything that they put their minds to. In 2018, an interview with Elle, in which she discussed sex workers, her own sex appeal, and sexuality in music and on social media, attracted criticism. In the New York Times magazine, music critic Vanessa Gregoriadis said that Minaj has become expert at modeling the ways that women can wield power in the industry. But she has also drawn attention to the ways in which power can be embodied by a woman standing up for herself and speaking her own mind. The cover art and music video for her 2014 single, Anaconda, attracted significant media attention upon release. The music video was viewed 19.6 million times in its first 24 hours of release. The Guardian called the video racy but noted that she doesn't shy from ruffling her audience's feathers, while others praised Minaj for owning her sexuality, examining her work through a feminist perspective. Another writer for The Guardian said, of the Anaconda video, Minaj turns the classic song into a conversation, and to let the camera objectify her lap dance by keeping it zoomed out, at a distance. Chapter 5, Philanthropy In 2010, Minaj performed a cover of Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, alongside singer Katy Perry, for service members during the 2010 VH1 Divas Salute the Troops concert. The two would later collaborate in 2017 on Swish Swish. In 2011, Mattel created a Barbie doll with Minaj's likeness to auction for Project Angel Food, a charity that provides food for people afflicted with HIV and AIDS. In 2012, in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy, Minaj donated $15,000 to the Food Bank for New York City and held a turkey drive at her alma mater, PS45. In May 2017, Minaj offered via Twitter to pay college tuition fees and student loans for 30 of her fans. She appeared to grant their requests, ranging from $500 to school supplies to $6,000 for tuition, promising to respond to more requests in a month or two. She also announced that she would launch an official charity for student loans and tuition payments in the near future. In the same month, Minaj revealed on Instagram that she has been donating money to a village in India for a few years via her pastor, Lydia Slowly. These donations helped the village get a computer center, a tailoring institute, a reading program, and two water wells. This is the kind of thing that makes me feel the most proud, she said about the new additions to the village. In August 2017, after Hurricane Harvey hit the city of Houston, Texas, Minaj answered a social media challenge by comedian and actor Kevin Hart and donated $25,000 to the Red Cross, saying she was praying for everyone there. On September 4, 2018, Minaj appeared as a guest and performed several songs on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Throughout the episode, Minaj and DeGeneres, with the participation of Walmart, gave out over $150,000 in donations to fans. In 2019, Minaj pulled out of headlining a concert in Saudi Arabia following online backlash from activists, after women's rights activist Laujain Al Hathlol was detained and arrested for speaking out against the Saudi regime. Minaj was praised by Thor Halverson of the Human Rights Foundation, who criticized her initial plan to perform in a letter, and released a statement saying, After careful reflection I believe it is important for me to make clear my support for the rights of women, the LGBTQ community and freedom of expression. In 2020, Minaj donated $25,000 to the St. Jude's Home for Girls School after visiting the school in her native country of Trinidad. In a speech, Minaj encouraged the girls to push through hard obstacles, even referencing her own experience with domestic violence, I've experienced being in a home with domestic violence. I've experienced, you know, being at a very difficult crossroads in my life as a teenager. And sometimes as a teenager when things happen, you feel like there's no up from there. In the same year, following the release of Minaj and 669 in's collaboration, Trolls, Minaj announced that a portion of the proceeds from the song, along with profits from all merchandise, 
will go towards the bail project amid the Black Lives Matter protests, sparked by the murder of George Floyd. Chapter 6, Legacy Various media outlets, such as Billboard, Time, NME, NBC News, Cosmopolitan and GQ have referred to Minaj as the Queen of Rap and the New York Times, the Washington Post, NPR, and LA Times have referred to her as the Queen of Hip Hop. In 2012, John Caramonica of the New York Times called Minaj the most influential female rapper of all time, and in 2015 Vanessa Grigoriadis from its magazine called her the world's biggest female rap superstar. In Evening Standard, Jock and MB called her one of the most influential rap artists of all time, saying that everything she does is bold, fearless and distinct, whether that be her eye-popping stage attire or her expertly delivered lyrics, which stare gender and race dead in the eye. Zoe Johnson from XXL called her one of the most versatile MCs and that she has made millions off upbeat pop hits and traditional hip-hop sounds that cater to both her femininity and her assertive side. For NPR Music, Saumya Krishnamurthy noted that Minaj has portrayed the quirky, life-size Barbie, glamorous vixen and girl next door, arguing that she changed the landscape for artists in hip-hop for the past decade with said alter egos. In 2017, Patrick Sandberg of Dazed argued that Minaj has surpassed every other female hip-hop artist to become the most successful in history in 2017. In 2020, Nick Soulsby of Pop Matters called her the best female rapper and the best rapper of the past 10 years, no gender preposition required. Glamour included Minaj in their list of 104 women who defined 2010's pop culture. In Double XL, Madeline Roth commented that Minaj has helped birth a new generation of rappers that mimic her style. She has influenced several artists, including Tinashe, Cher Lloyd, Cupcake, Billie Eilish, Lil Nas X, Ms. Banks, Asian Doll, Doja Cat, Megan The Stallion, Lotto, Shensia, Bia, Lakia, Luisa Sonza, Coyla Ray, Malibu Mitch, City Girls, Young Baby Tate, Rico Nasty, Princess Fatara, Erica Banks, Flo Millie, Ivorian Doll, Angel Hayes, Ruby Rose, Lady Lachur, and Saweetie. Billboard credited her for bringing female rap back to the mainstream in the US. With over 140 features, the magazine has called Minaj a rap and pop icon adding that she's been one of popular music's most reliable guest performers, notching dozens of chart hits as a supporting presence on other artists' singles. Minaj has been credited by Complex for being able to take a simple song and turn it into a smash hit just because she's featured on it. In 2012, Cara Monica in the New York Times said that Minaj became a nimble, evocative rapper. She became an intricate lyricist. She became a thoughtful singer. She became a risky performer. She invented new personae. More than any other rapper in the mainstream, she pushed hard against expectations with no one around to compare herself to, or for others to compare her to, she became her own watermark. In 2014, NPR's Eric Nielsen said that Minaj's success over the last decade has stood as an exception to the unwritten rule that women rappers no longer have a place among elite artists. Nylon writer, Demisha Inman, also credited Minaj for her influence which stands as one of the most successful rappers of the millennium, also going on to say that Minaj battled misogyny and industry bias against black women to carve her own identity and sound thus impacting her career. Complex also commented that, from her bold outfits to her multicolored wigs, Minaj used confidence that inspired others who were watching closely. Doesn't need anything but her art to speak for itself. Complex named her best rapper alive in 2014, making her the only female being named so. Chapter 7, Achievements Minaj is the recipient of numerous accolades, including 8 American Music Awards, 12 BT Awards, 7 BT Hip Hop Awards, 4 Billboard Music Awards, 5 MTV Video Music Awards, 6 MTV Europe Music Awards, 2 People's Choice Awards, one Soul Train Music Award, and 14 Choice Awards. Minaj has received a total of 10 Grammy Award nominations. 
She received her first Grammy nomination in 2010 for Best Rap, Performance by a Duo or Group. In 2012, Minaj received three nominations, including Best New Artist and Best Rap Album. In 2014, she also received her second nomination for Best Rap Album. She has won the MTV Video Music Award for Best Hip Hop Video three times and has won the Best Female Video Award once. Minaj is the first woman to have appeared on the Forbes Hip Hop Cash Kings list since its inception in 2007, having made four consecutive appearances between 2011 and 2014. In 2010, Minaj became the first female solo artist to have seven songs on the Billboard Hot 100 simultaneously and the first woman to appear on MTV's annual Hottest MC list, since its inception in 2007. In 2011, Minaj was ranked sixth on the Rolling Stone Master Ranking of the Kings of Hip Hop which is based on record sales and social media metrics. She is the only rapper to win the BT Award for Best Female Hip Hop Artist seven consecutive times. In 2013, Minaj became the most charted female rapper on the Billboard Hot 100 at the time, with 44 entries, tying Mariah Carey as seventh among women of all genres. Minaj has 20 top 10 singles on the chart, the most for any female rapper, with four of those being solo songs. In 2017, Minaj broke the record for most Hot 100 entries by any female artist, surpassing Aretha Franklin, and in 2018, she became the first female artist to accumulate 100 entries on the Hot 100. She held the mentioned record for most Hot 100 entries by a female artist until it was broken in December 2020 by singer-songwriter Taylor Swift. She is the female artist with the second most Hot 100 entries, behind Swift. In 2019, Billboard Women in Music awarded her with the Game Changer Award. In 2019, her collaboration with Carol G., named Tusa, received two nominations at the Latin Grammys. The song became the longest running number one single on the Argentina Hot 100, having spent 25 weeks on the position. In 2020, Minaj became the second female rapper to chart at number one on the Hot 100 more than once with her 669 in collaboration Trolls. She also became the second female to debut atop the chart since Lauryn Hill in 1998. In the same year, she also was the most streamed female rapper on Spotify. In 2021, the music video for Anaconda became the first female rap solo song to reach 1 billion views on YouTube. In total, Minaj has six music videos with more than 1 billion views across all credits on YouTube, becoming the first female rapper to do so, and being only one of three female artists including Rihanna and Katy Perry to have six music videos reach more than one billion views. Me in 2016, she was listed on the Time 100 annual list of the most influential people in the world, she was also featured on one of the physical covers of the issue. Complex ranked her eighth on their list of best rappers of the 2010s, being the only female rapper on the list. Chapter 8, Other Activities Chapter 8 Section 1, Fragrances Minaj has a line of fragrances first launched in September 2012. She partnered with Give Back Brands to introduce her first fragrance, Pink Friday, which was nominated for three 2013 Fi Fi Awards for Fragrance of the Year, Best Packaging, and Media Campaign of the Year. A Pink Friday, Special edition was released in April 2013, and a deluxe edition version of the fragrance, titled Pink Friday, Deluxe Edition, was also launched in December 2013. Her fourth and fifth fragrance line, Minajesty, was launched in September 2013 followed by a flanker fragrance, Minajesty, Exotic Edition, which was released exclusively to the Home Shopping Network in June 2014. This was followed by the launch of her sixth fragrance line, Ornica, in September 2014. A year later in 2015, Minaj released The Pink Print, her seventh fragrance in support of her third studio album of the same name. In 2016, Minaj launched her eighth fragrance Trini Girl. In 2018, in support of her fourth studio album, she released her ninth fragrance, 
Queen. Chapter 8 Section 2 Products and Endorsements Minaj has been affiliated with several manufacturing companies and has endorsed a number of products during her career. She has also stated that she has learned the ins and outs of business so she could do it herself. Her first collaboration was a November 2010 endorsement deal with MAC Cosmetics which sold a lipstick, Pink 4 Friday, for four consecutive Fridays to promote her album Pink Friday. In 2011, Minaj helped introduce the Casio Tricks in Times Square, and created a six-piece nail polish collection for Opie products with colors named after her songs. In April 2012, Minaj helped launch the Nokia Lumia 900 in Times Square. The following month, Minaj appeared in television and internet advertisements for Pepsi's Live For Now campaign, which featured a remix of her single Moment For Life. She endorsed the 2012 Viva Glam campaign with Ricky Martin, which raised $270 million for the Mac AIDS Fund. With designer Jeremy Scott, Minaj signed an endorsement deal with Adidas Fall and Winter 2012 campaign to appear in internet advertisements and commercials for Adidas Originals. Set to her song, Masquerade, her segment of the advertisement was filmed in Brooklyn and also featured Big Sean, Derek Rose, Sky Ferreira and to anyone in other locations worldwide. In 2011, Mattel crafted a Barbie doll with Minaj's likeness for charity, which Minaj described as a major moment in her career. A spokeswoman for Mattel stated that, Barbie is obviously a pop culture icon and Nikki is a big part of pop culture and also huge within the fashion industry, as well as a big Barbie fan. Matthew Perpetuo of Rolling Stone stated that the Minaj Barbie doll is notable in that the rapper has made Barbie dolls a crucial part of her aesthetic. In early 2013, Minaj fronted the Viva Glam campaign by herself, which included the introduction of Nikki 2 lipstick and lip gloss. She also introduced the Nikki Minaj collection clothing line for Kmart, composed of clothing, accessories and housewares. In February 2013, Blue Water Comics announced that Minaj would star in the Fame biographical comic series, debuting in Fame, Nicki Minaj. She partnered with Beats Electronics to introduce her Pink Pill speakers in April 2013, appearing with DeRay Davis in a commercial for the speakers that same month. In June 2013, Minaj lead an ad campaign for Mix Fusions, a fruit-infused, single-serve Moscato wine beverage of which she is a part owner. On March 30, 2015, it was announced that Minaj was a co-owner of the music streaming service Tidal. The service specializes in lossless audio and high-definition music videos. In addition to Minaj and company owner Jay-Z, 16 stakeholders including Beyoncé, Madonna, Rihanna, and Kanye West own a 3% equity stake in the service. In 2017, she starred in H&M's holiday campaign along with Anna Ewers, Mariah Carla Boscano, Jesse Williams, Charlie Fraser, and Ilibidi Danny. In 2018, Minaj starred in the trailer for Madden NFL 19 alongside Lil Dicky, Quavo and others. In 2019, Minaj began a partnership with the luxury clothing company Fendi, who stated that the collaboration made sense, she will present it extremely well. Minaj's Fendi Prints on Collection launched in 2019 on October 14. Chapter 8 Section 3, COVID-19 Vaccine Controversy In September 2021, Minaj announced she would not be attending the 2021 Met Gala due to the COVID-19 vaccine requirement. She stated that she has avoided public appearances and traveling after contracting the virus herself and having to quarantine from her son as a result. Minaj shared several tweets about her unvaccinated status and claimed she wanted to do more research and be comfortable with her decision first. She alleged in a tweet that her cousin's friend in Trinidad suffered swollen testicles and became impotent as a result of the vaccine. These tweets received backlash where her story about her cousin's friend became the subject of jokes and memes. Trinidad and Tobago Health Minister Terence Dialsing declared that Minaj's claims were false and that no such report existed. Shortly after, Minaj recommended other people get the vaccine and set up a Twitter poll on COVID 19 vaccine brands. 
she tweeted that she was sure she would get vaccinated herself because of touring. The White House offered Minaj a phone call with a doctor to answer questions about the safety of the vaccine. In an Instagram Live response two days later, she claimed that she was simply asking questions and she did not give any facts about the vaccine. Reporters allegedly harassed Minaj's family for a story, with Minaj sharing some text messages she alleged were harassment on social media. Chapter 9 Personal Life In her song All Things Go, Minaj revealed that she had an abortion as a teenager. She has said that although it has haunted her, she stands by her decision. In July 2011, her cousin Nicholas Telemock was murdered near his home in Brooklyn, an incident she references in her songs All Things Go and Champion. In February 2021, Minaj's father, Robert Maraj, died while walking along a road on Long Island in a hit-and-run accident. Charles Pelevich, a 70-year-old man, was charged with killing Maraj. He was arraigned and charged with two felonies, leaving scene of incident involving death of a person and tampering with or suppressing physical evidence. Minaj commented on her father's death in a letter, saying, It has been the most devastating loss of my life. I find myself wanting to call him all the time, more so now that he's gone. May his soul rest in paradise. He was very loved and will be very missed. Early in her career, Minaj identified as bisexual and made several references to it in her music. However, she eventually stated in a 2010 Rolling Stone interview, I think girls are sexy, but I'm not going to lie and say that I date girls. She once again addressed her sexuality in 2020 on Doja Cat's Say So remix, used to be bi, but now I'm just hetero. The lyric received backlash and divided members of the LGBT community, with some accusing her of bisexual erasure while others voicing there is nothing wrong with originally identifying as bisexual, and then later identifying as straight. In late 2014, Minaj separated from her longtime boyfriend Safari Samuels, whom she had dated since 2003. According to Minaj, he had proposed to her, but she declined. Several tracks on the pink print are believed to have been inspired by the end of their relationship. Minaj began dating rapper Meek Mill in early 2015. In January 2017, she announced that she had ended their relationship. She briefly dated fellow rapper Nas in the year 2017. In December 2018, Minaj began dating her childhood friend Kenneth Lou Petty and filed for a marriage license in August 2019. She announced that they had officially married on October 21. She hyphenated his last name to hers upon marriage. In July 2020, Minaj announced via Instagram that she was expecting her first child with Petty. On September 30, 2020, she gave birth to a son. Minaj refers to him as Papa Bear in public. Chapter 9 Section 1 – Legal Issues After facing charges for failing to register as a sex offender in California, her husband Kenneth Petty was entered into the California Megan's Law database in 2020, having been convicted of attempted rape in 1995 in New York. He previously served nearly four years in prison for the mentioned crime. In August, 2021, her husband's victim, named Jennifer Huff, filed a lawsuit against the couple for alleged harassment and intimidation, and alleged infliction of emotional distress, and did an interview about the mentioned lawsuit on the talk show The Real Dot. While Minaj has not publicly commented on the case, she addressed the accusations in a December case filing. According to TMZ, Minaj claimed, I never asked to change her story, I never offered her any money in return for a statement, and I did not threaten her with any type of harm if she chose not to provide a statement. I emphatically told her that I did not want her to lie about anything, and to tell the truth about what she had just revealed to me only if she was comfortable with doing so. Minaj's attorney also alleged that Huff's story in court documents was inconsistent, and had multiple discrepancies from her interview on the reel. Huff later voluntarily dropped the case against Minaj, with TMZ reporting there was no financial statement involved in the dropping. Speaking to a federal judge, 
Huff's lawyer announced that the lawsuit will be refiled in California. Chapter 10, Discography Studio Albums Pink Friday Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded The Pink Print Queen Chapter 11, Filmography Ice Age, Continental Drift The Other Woman Barbershop, The Next Cut The Angry Birds Movie 2 Chapter 12, Tours Chapter 12 Section 1, Headlining Tours Pink Friday Tour Pink Friday, Reloaded Tour The Pink Print Tour The Nikki World Tour Chapter 12 Section 2, Opening Act Lil Wayne, America's Most Wanted Tour Lil Wayne, I Am Still Music Tour Britney Spears, Femme Fatale Tour